A very good evening and warm welcome to Dan Really Likes Wine, presented by Pick and Pay. And welcome not to the Dan Really Likes Wine cellar, but instead to the office of George Carinos, advocate at large, who's very kindly lent me his working space because he has a generator I do not. And for the umpteenth time, not just this year or even this month, but this week, and it's only Monday, we have load shedding in my particular part of Johannesburg. The joys of life in South Africa. What do we offset the travails of ESCOM and so many other things with? Well, most often in my house, and I suspect in many others, very good South African wine. And we are not the only ones to appreciate and understand the quality, which is why in three months' time, the entire wine world, or at least those of decent standing and beyond, will be descending upon South Africa for an event we haven't had for a few years now. It cannot arrive soon enough. It is Cape Wine. It is the greatest wine event of the year, and it is going to light up Cape Town a little later on, three months from now. And so we're celebrating with that three-month countdown, having begun with the head on show at Wines of South Africa. Siobhan Thompson, who's a good friend and regular visitor to the show, will be joining us. And we're also heading over to America. It is the 4th of July. Some rather big celebrations in America today. And so we thought we'd get somebody who combined both the best of America and the best of South Africa. And Andy Wilgo joins us from Elephant's Corner Wines. They are doing a terrific job in bringing in a growing selection of South African wine into a growing region of America. How are they doing? How is the wine story going? And why is Andy dragging a whole pile of people over to Cape Wine at the end of the year? We'll find out just a little bit later. So that's the focus of today's show, three months out from Cape Wine and the almighty party it promises to be, but not just a party, also a celebration of where South African wine is and a focus on some really key areas for the future of not just South African wine, but wine in general. And that is why so many people are so excited about the event now shimmering on our not too distant horizon. Before we get into Cape Wine though, and a little bit of America, let's have a quick look at some of our latest wine news. Well, this was Friday afternoon and the relaunch of Marble relaunch. Well, uh, it was a two week break they took to do some touch ups on Johannesburg's top restaurant. Uh, to take you through the people there on the left uh, with me, that is Vickers Human, who most of you will know, reigning South African sommelier of the year. He was taking me through the cellar. He did have two members of security with him and kept a very close eye on me, which was slightly disappointing. It's a superb wine list. And what he has done, as well as rearranging a few things in his cellar, he's bought some wine out of the marble collection. So next time you're down at the restaurant, ask for Vickers or one of his sommeliers, and they'll be able to guide you towards a few hidden gems from their older vintages. Then the lady in the middle, she's the real star attraction of the upgrade, the Small touches have been done to lift an already fabulous space and enhance the aesthetic. Irene Kiriakou, who oversaw the initial design and has now overseen what they've done in the last two weeks just to lift it ever so slightly. And then on the far right, that's Gary Kiriakou, Irene's husband, David Higgs' partner in Marble. And that was him talking through what they've done over the last fortnight and the changes made. Do go along. I don't think you need much encouragement to get to Marble anyway. But if you do get there in the next little while, do look out for some really cool changes. Then also at the weekend, this this was out the Mall of Africa. What were we doing drinking wine at the Mall of Africa? That was the Pick and Pay Wine and Food Festival. The whole selection of wines from the shelves of Pick and Pay paired with all manner of food. And this was sold out. There were two and a half thousand people in there. There was a great selection of wine. Uh, you can see uh, second from right on the bottom. Uh, that's your man from Laurent Perrier. So there was a bit of champagne, loads of bubbles going around. Uh, but just a, a full selection. And also, and you can see top right there with that sunset stage going, music playing, people dancing. It was a really feel-good afternoon. People enjoying themselves, people being back together as a group and just having a, a really good time together helped 
by some fabulous South African wine and a little bit of French champagne. So really good afternoon. If you missed it, there are more coming up this year in Durban, in Cape Town, and at the Wanderers in Johannesburg. I shall be at all of them, and I hope to see you there too. And then a quick shout out if you're watching this as a wine producer. Winemag.co.za have the prescient Cape Bordeaux Red Blend Report open for entries. You've got from now until the 20th of July uh, for the Cape Bordeaux Red Blend Report. Christian Eads will be overseeing it. Uh, Melu Lambert and Gillette Stain will be joining him for the judging. So those reports are now open. And the Sauvignon Blanc report, Spencer Fondomier, amongst the judges joining Christian there. And that is also open until the 20th of July. So if you want to get in a Cape Bordeaux red blend report, uh, you want to join the Sauvignon Blanc report and see how you rate. Entry is now open until the 20th of July. Well, our entry is open for Cape Wine. Can you buy tickets? How does it all work? What on earth is happening? And why is a guy who's originally from neither South Africa nor America in America selling South African wine? Well, let's find out from both of them and welcome them back to the show. Uh, wonderful to have our CEO of Wines of South Africa, Siobhan Thompson, with us. And Andy Wolger, who gets 812 bonus points and lifetime Woza membership for wearing a Springbok <laughs> jersey on the show you biscuit guys welcome to both of you and i uh, i want to get a full background on that rugby jersey in a moment uh but siobhan uh first of all lovely to have you back on the show and looking remarkably calm for somebody who's three months out from the biggest event on the wine calendar before we find out how it's going and how preparation is looking for people who don't know tell us what is cape wine good evening dan um cape wine is the biggest trade show wine trade show in the southern hemisphere and it's our showcasing for south african wine um in cape town so the whole idea of cape wine is to invite trade media buyers influencers to cape town to come and experience the cape winelands and also interact with all our producers who would like to e export and cape wine usually happens every three years and it was supposed to happen last year but because of covid we delayed it and that's why it's happening this year so it's bringing everybody together. It, it sounds like it's just one huge wine party. Everybody comes together, we'll open lots of bottles of wine and have a fantastic time. It is a little more than that, of course. Uh, explain how the, the fundamentals of it work, why people are gathering, and what's going to be happening through the event. Okay. So the idea is, yes, it is fun, but it's also hard work. So we get people to come to Cape Town, and we usually invite them a week before the show. And we set up programs for them. We immerse them into the Cape Winelands. They go and see producers. They get to interact with producers. Then on the Tuesday night, we bring them to Cape Town. And we say, okay, now's the hard work. And the idea of, of Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, that's 5, 6, 7 October, is to get everyone into the convention center, into the big hall, and get them to really get down to business. So meet the producers, taste their new vintages, taste their, some of the old vintages explore the wines and hopefully take on more wines and promote um, more wines in countries of, our, of um, export. So, for instance, the United States or Canada or the UK, etc. So the idea is really to foster trade and export, um, but also to get people to experience our wine in its origin. So come out here, experience what Cape Town and the surrounding areas are like um, and become ambassadors and go back um create that that ambiance around our wine sell our wine and stock our wine which i'm sure will happen simply based on how much appeal the cape has to do exactly that but i suspect your confidence in this happening is shaped also by what has gone before give us a history of cape wine and the, the success that we're able to look back on as we prepare for 2022 yeah, good question, Dan. Um, Cape Wine started in the early 2000s, and it used to happen every two years. And I think it was a relatively small show. South Africa was still pretty new on the export side. We were growing. Um, and, and we found that it, it was sort of became too frequent. 
Um, and when the World Cup happened, the World Cup soccer happened in 2010, we decided to move it out to three years. And at that time, it was actually happening in, in April every year, but it was clashing with our harvest. So the, 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 the sort of idea was to move it to the later part of the year, to September. And we found that a lot more successful. So it's grown and grown and grown. And I think it's really become a lot more popular. And it's also become a big gathering point for international buyers, medias, influencers. We have sommeliers coming. Um, we have bloggers coming, but we also have serious buyers here. And the idea is to really get them introduced to South African wine if they don't if they don't already stock South African wine, and if they do, get them to broaden their portfolios as well. So it is a very important showcasing for South African wine. And yes, we talk about it being fun, but but there's also a lot of serious business that needs to happen. Are there specific success stories that you're able to look back on and uh, pinpoint, say, right, well, you know, these people came to Cape Wine and bang, uh, six months later, there was a whole pile of South African wine disappearing to a new corner of the wine drinking world? Yeah, sorry, Dan, you did break up a bit there, but I, I think I got the gist of it. If the, of what we were saying. Um, yeah, I think it's it's important that they come here and we see the result afterwards. So we do start seeing South African wine popping up in areas where we haven't necessarily focused. So we'll have buyers coming from smaller um, countries in Europe, um, countries that are still developing in terms of wine um, wine growth. And, and we start, and we do see that these buyers come here, they experience South African wine and they take it back and start stocking the wine and growing and spreading South African wine around the world. And one of the people who does exactly that is Melissa Sutherland. So true that the best ambassadors are those going back to their home countries and in their language singing our praises as a fabulous wine tourism destination. Also mm -hmm. great that we're back in the Great Wine Capitals Network. Melissa, who knows the industry particularly well and is a great supporter of the show, having people around the world to make South African wine better known and more celebrated is so important, as both Siobhan mm. and Melissa say. So let's go and find someone who does exactly that. He's the best dressed person we've had on the show in 2022. Andy, welcome back. Lovely to see you. Thanks very much, Dan. Glad to be here. <laughs> now give us a quick recap for people who have missed uh, the previous occasions on which you've lit up Dan really likes wine. Uh, the uh, the snapshot of the uh, the Andy Wolga story and the Elephant's Corner story. So yeah, I mean uh, Elephant's Corner. We started um, our business here. It's about eighteen months ago, I guess now. Uh, myself, my business partner Clint Saint, and uh, with a lot of uh, help and advice from. Uh, some great wine making friends of ours, Fainian Korbler, for example, um, and so on. And uh, and we we were wanting to, uh, I guess, create a, um, a an outlet for uh, for these particular wineries to be able to have their wine sold in uh, in North Carolina. And uh, having been in um, the wine industry, uh, specifically in South African wine industry, for some time myself, it seemed like a a great idea to uh, to get this off the ground and to give. Um, Give these small producers, uh, um, you know, a, a good ray of hope, as it were, coming out of COVID, and uh, and keep it rolling. And um, yeah, from me, uh, from my point of view, I mean, you know, I've been in wine for quite some time now. But prior to that, I was in motor racing, Formula One, uh, Le Mans racing series, uh, you name it. You know, that was my background in racing, marketing, management, and all that stuff. And uh, um, and I kind of uh, got tied up in wine at some point, and here we are today. <laughs> <laughs> not only proudly selling South African wine, but wearing that Springbok jersey very proudly as well. And, uh, and, and selling South African wine to a market that is still very much in its infancy in terms of getting to know and to understand and to uh, discover and to buy South African wine. Since we last spoke to you when you were really just getting started, uh, I get the sense from the newsletters I read and the messages you send through that if not exponential, it has certainly been a considerable surge forward for what you guys are doing and the wine that you've been able to bring into the American market and introduce to people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's an absolute honor to be doing what we are and um, to represent these brands uh, wholeheartedly uh, as a sole um, South African importer. We don't deal with anything else except South African wine. Uh, I don't think there's any need to, to be honest. I love every everything that we are able to bring in that the country's producing uh there's a place for it here and it really is 
it's an education every day. It's uh, not just for me, but for our customers. And, um, you know, I watch your show as often as I can, as you know, and, uh, and glean information from WOSA, from Jim Clark, of course, and others as much as I possibly can. And, um, and pass it on to our customers. And, uh, you know, our customers that you mentioned coming over to Cape Wine later this year, um, some of which are watching us right now, um, they're, they're our ambassadors too. You know, they're the people that, that uh, just fall in love with the products and, uh, and get to know the winemakers, get to know the process and uh, in a real intimate way. And I think, um, you know, the wine itself speaks for itself. Not only have you got, like, for example, here, I've got one of Vinance wines here, absolutely fantastic label that tells a story, uh, much the same way as this one does from Jacques here at uh, Black Elephant. Um, you know, that, that's part of the deal. Part of the deal is the label telling the story and then obviously how we how we hand sell the wine from there. And so you're correct. It is an education. It is um, uh, an everyday process, basically. And uh, uh, it's a great thrill to be doing this and to see people's reactions when they taste maybe for the first time South African wine. And they just think, oh, I didn't didn't realize you guys make wine there and I oh, didn't expect it to be this good. So that's uh, that's very often what I hear. And um, and it just makes it a, a great pleasure to be doing what I'm doing and uh, and to wear the jersey, of course. You know, I mean, what else could I do? <laughs> <laughs> amongst uh, amongst the wines you're bringing over now is the wine of Holden Manson Franchek. I see Gerard, who was on the show with us last week as he's launched mm -hmm. wine with Tendai the Beast and Tawaira. Hi, Andy. Go the elephant, says Gerard, who will currently be in some uh, exotic corner of Europe doing more important beer and wine research. Gerard, good to have you, have you watching. If I think back to a lot of the time I've spent in America, Andy, the, uh, there's a, a novelty factor to uh, people who come from different parts of the world, which uh, for a lot of America is anywhere else in the world. And I particularly remember arriving to host a conference in New Jersey a few years ago, telling the guy who was my minder that I'd come from Johannesburg and he paused for a while and then told me that he'd always wanted to go to Australia. Uh, and so I was, uh, I was definitely a novelty factor for him. In terms of the wine that you are giving people, is it a case that for a lot of them, it is a novelty factor. Oh, wine from South Africa. Well, I'll, I'll try it. I'm not sure about it. And then discovering quite quickly that what they thought might have just been a little bit of quirk that they'd have a taste of and then move on from, they've actually discovered they quite like and they'd like to invest a bit more time and interest in it. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's a, it's an education, like I say. And um, uh, just to try the styles of South African wine compared to what they might be used to drinking if they're if they're you know if they really like these heavy style cabernets or over extracted style Merlot or something like that, and then they taste something really elegant and beautiful that expresses the fruit in a in a different way. Um, it's an eye opener for a lot of people, and I think uh, whether they are trying it initially as a bit of a, a you know, let's just try this and maybe I won't buy it kind of deal. And they end up purchasing the wine. Um, that's very often what we see, you know, and uh, and quite honestly, uh, they could be from anywhere in the country here or from anywhere in the world, I guess. You know, um, it's, it's it's an educational process. Um, but to tell the stories that we have, uh, in particular in South Africa, more than anywhere else right now with a sustainability angle, that's an everyday process for me to talk about that and to show people that we are you know, world leaders where that's concerned. And I know obviously that's the main focus for the, uh, for the Cape wine this year too. So, um, but it is, uh, it's emphasized and, um, uh, and to be able to tell those stories that our wineries are working on, you know, particular, like, like for example, recycling water, drip feeding the vines, um, uh, solar energy, um, you know, working with people rather than machinery and all that stuff. It, it makes a, a massive difference. And, uh, and people here in the US do like to know the stories. That's what it's all about. And I'll uh, come back to some more of that uh, a little later. One last question though, on the style of wine that you're taking in to America. Where sits the balance between, I know this is the kind of style of wine that people are drinking, and I know that's a fairly generic term, but uh, I, I know broadly what they like, so I'm going to try and mirror it up with stuff I can bring in from South Africa versus something that's completely new and completely different uh, that might not be part of the existing palate, part of the existing uh, cellar that people are drinking from, uh, but you're surprising them and pleasantly so uh, with something they might not have expected or experienced before. You know, for me, I think I like to approach every customer, whether it's a, a possible vendor or a you know direct client to purchase the wine, whether it's either, um, just with something new, something different, something that the country is representative of the country, let's say, you know. Um, 
I held up that bottle of Otreffa just now to Cinso 1954. Um, you know, you, that, that's history in a, in a bottle right there. You don't need to be trying to replicate something that is done here in this country or in Australia or somewhere else. I think for me, it's about the education of, of South African wine and showing people and having them taste what's in the bottle, not necessarily what, you know, an example of what South Africa is doing that another country is doing, if I can explain that in the right way. It's kind of like, these are individuals, you know, these wines are, uh, they all have their own personality and they're all spectacular in their own way. And uh, I like personally not to try and compare. I think um, I like to, I like to approach customers with a, the viewpoint that this is uh, this is a new experience for them and this is what we're doing there and this is why it's so great you know and that's that's really i guess my angle there's always people that will say okay yeah it's well, similar to this and similar to that you know as a customer might say that to me which is fine absolutely I, I like that connection that they've made and i think that's important too because they can express their viewpoint but um ultimately you know they're picking up something they're tasting something that uh that uh, they're, they're learning the story with and really that is the major part of, of, of our growth and our process is you see in my newsletters, you mentioned Dan. I, I do a lot of events with the wine dinners, brides, you know, tastings. Um, the reason I do so many is because we need to get in front of our customers. We need to see them face to face and, uh, and educate them. And, uh, it, it, you know, every day is different. It, it's never boring. It's, it's a great story to tell. And, uh, and just to have something different in the bottle uh, and seeing their reactions nine times out of 10 is great. And, um, uh, it's just a, it's a thrill to be able to do that. It's such a positive and uplifting philosophy, and we are benefiting from it in America, uh, thanks to Andy and his Elephant's Corner team. Right, Cape Wine 2022, Siobhan, uh, sustainability, and that's Sustainability 360, which I know is the hashtag and the payoff. It is a really big focus, and it's not simply lip service. It's not just a, a nice thing to say because it sounds like the right thing to be saying. This sits very, very firmly at how you've structured everything you're planning to do for Cape Wine 2022. Correct, Dan. It was lovely to hear Andy speak about um, sustainability, but also how people in America and other countries adopt South African wine. Once they taste it, they're really hooked. Um, and I think that's really the secret to, to growing South African wine is getting the wine in front of people. But to jump back to sustainability, one thing I think us South Africans are very bad at doing is telling the world what we do. Um, we do it, we get on with it, but we don't publicize, we don't market enough, um, we don't show what we're doing, all the good work we're doing. And I think sustainability around the world is a buzzword, um, but it is it is important. And that was the reason why we said Sustainability 360 is we wanted to encompass all the aspects of sustainability. And, and just to say three pillars is, is really minim minimalizing it a bit because there's just so much involved in it. But we really packed it into three sort of pillars, be it people, place, or prosperity, because they're all very important for, for the survival of South African wine. And we're going to be unpacking these in seminars. So we have an opening seminar where we're going to really talk about the, those three pillars. In fact, we have our Minister of Agriculture as our keynote speaker, Minister Deza. I think it's very exciting um, to have her as a keynote keynote speaker and to have the support of the government and the buy-in um, and talking about the importance of people and place um, as well as prosperity. So we'll have those sort of angles for the opening seminar, which is the first morning. Then we'll have um, what we call our, our seminars, our big seminars. Those are hour-long seminars where we explore different aspects of sustainability and we taste the wines with them. And there we're unpacking um, topics like conservation, collaboration, mentorship and development because the people part of it's quite important the fair labor fair trade um, aspect to it regenerative regenerative farming um, those sort of areas so we really want to showcase what producers are doing and then we have the sort of quick snappy um, area where we call the speaker's corner and we have half an hour seminars and we be looking at all sorts of different topics there as well um, so We'll be telling the story, but we also want our producers to tell the story because they are doing so much work and they're not always talking about it. You know, aspects, little things like um, giving back, uh, sponsoring of schools, early develop uh, childhood development, you know, the Pebbles projects, um, 
the type of farming they're doing, the water projects, um, you know, looking at um, cultiv uh, different cultivars or varieties that are climate re resistant, all those sort of aspects, because we've got a lot to tell the world. And it was really great for Andy to, to hear Andy talking about that. So that's that's really what we want to, want to focus uh, Cape Wine on. We want people to leave saying, wow, we didn't know that you were doing that. Wow, we didn't realize how far South Africa was down the line in terms of these practices. Also very important are things like carbon footprint, carbon calculator, all those aspects. So we're going to be paying a lot of attention to that at Cape Wine. And we want to make the show a sustainable show as well. So the stands we're using will either be recycled or reused or repurposed. Um, the water we use, we want to make sure that we're not wasting water at the show. The corks that, that will be pulled out of the bottle will be recycled and reused. So we've got to look at all of those aspects. Um, and we'll also be looking at things like um, packaging as well. You know, we've got a seminar on canning, for instance. So I think that's that the whole core of the show will focus around those aspects of sustainability. And we'll also be open and honest where we're still on a journey. You know, we're not perfect at everything, but we're growing and we're learning. And, and I think we'll talk about those as well. It almost sounds, at the risk of being a, a too proudly South African, uh, this is an opportunity for the South African wine industry to not just show the world what we are doing, but to really stake a claim as being, if not the world's leader, then certainly one of them in turning the wine industry into a far more sustainable space than historically it has been. It's a good comment, uh, uh, Dan, because... As I mentioned when I started talking about this is we don't tell the world what we're doing. Now, we've got a seal on the bottle. Um, I want to see if I can show you it here. You see that seal there? That seal is 11 years old. Um, and it's a combination of what we call our wine of origin. So wine of origin has been around since the 70s and it tracks where the wine comes from, the vintage, the variety. So it's really an auth it shows how authentic the product is, but combined with that, the new what I call the new combined seal, which is 11 years old, it, it talks about sustainability. It's called our IPW, um, and we've had that system in place for 11 years, and it is how we farm. So you do audits on how you use water, how you use chemicals, um, what you do in your vineyard, but we haven't been. We put it on our bottle, we show it's there, but we don't really talk that much about it. And we are world leaders. It's, we, we were a leader in that system. Um, and you hear a lot about what Australia is doing, what New Zealand's doing. Um, but we need to say more about what we're doing because we have a very good certification system. Um, and, and I think that's very important. We're getting a lot of people uh, watching on with great interest and understandably so. Uh, Bernard George Dewey, thank you for all your hard work and showing the South African wines in the USA that aimed at Andy. Winership Wines, who we get on regularly. Hi from London. Stephanie Potter, awesome show. Great job, Andy. Elephant's Corner. We can't wait to get to Cape Town Wine Show. Uh, Keith Magoli, well done, Andy. And Marinda Clear. And Marinda's wine, I think, is part of the Elephant's Corner offering. Hi, Andy, says Marinda, who was on the show with us not too long ago. All of which says to me, Andy, that you've got a, a, an awful lot of support for an interest in South African wine. And it now appears that you're turning into a bit of a tourism operator as well, because you're bringing <laughs> half of America to Cape Town later this year. Yeah, I think most of those people I've paid to be on the show here today. <laughs> uh, no, I, I appreciate everyone uh, watching, and uh, it's nice to see uh, the comments and from Bernard at Chamonix as well. We're really uh, proud to have uh, to have his wine, to have Neil Stefan's wine um, uh, as part of our portfolio too, and so on and so forth. And uh, of course, Marinda, and uh, I want to congratulate Marinda on the Malo Award. I think that's amazing, and, uh, and and so so proud to have her wines here. They have. They've taken off in the last couple of months since uh, since we received the first couple of wines, and uh, we're, we're thrilled to have them. But um, yeah, so in terms of Cape wine, um, so Stephanie Potter made a comment. Stephanie is one of my great customers, and her and her husband, Bob, uh, from Salisbury Wine Shop in North Carolina, uh, will be coming out to the show with us. Uh, we also have Nikki from Triangle Wines in Raleigh. She buys wine for four major stores in the Raleigh-Durham network uh, in, in North Carolina. 
And we also have uh, Camilla and Bob Wheeler from um, Nautical Wheelers in Newburn and Oriental uh, also coming up with us to, uh, to experience the show. And um, I can honestly tell you, for these folks to make the commitment to travel uh, 8,000 miles to, um, uh, to be in Cape Town, obviously it's a no-brainer because you know where you're going, such a beautiful city and uh, with the winelands, but to, to, uh, to, to be such great customers of ours uh, that want to learn more, that want to um, taste and, and experience other wines that, uh, that all of us have not yet experienced and maybe they can uh, assist with... Uh, you know, giving me some ideas on what they like uh, when we're at the show. So just like uh, uh, Siobhan was saying, this is an, an opportunity for myself as an importer and self-distributor for uh, my best customers, the buyers of our wines, you know, to come in and, um, and take advantage of, of all the beauty that, uh, that Cape Town and surrounding area offers. But also, um, you know, under one roof, we've got fabulous producers and uh, uh, some wonderful new wines that um, that we'll probably end up bringing some back here to uh, to to sell in North Carolina, and um, I, I can't be grateful enough. I mean, it's a wonderful opportunity, and uh, you know, we're going to visit some of our farms afterwards. We're going to Clarington to Normandy Farm with Johan, who I know is watching us right now. How's it going, man? Um, Vinand, of course, at Decline of Vine. We're going to Black Elephant, to Chamonix, to Holden, Mans, to Hey Gerard. Um, and so on, you know, we're a uh, stride with Riani. We'll, we'll try and get down to Marinda's if we can. It's the whole thing is a, is a fantastic experience. And, um, and, and, you know, we just want to keep this growing. We want to bring more people into, uh, into, uh, uh the Cape Winelands over the next uh, few years, you know, um, and we can, we can certainly facilitate that with our sister company to make that happen. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful experience to be able to have this show. And, and may I say, Dan, as well, um, compliments to you for having this show because I don't know of any other uh, country in the world that has the support um, of someone like yourself, for example, you know, on a regular chat show in South Africa to be able to put this kind of program out uh, and support the, 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 um, uh, the winemaking industry in the way that uh, South Africa does. It's... Uh, absolutely spectacular it gives us a great platform to be able to um you know come on your show tell everyone what we do um and uh, uh and listen to you know what's going on in general in the, in the world of wine in south africa it's a, it's a wonderful experience my wife would tell you it is an elaborate ruse to allow me to drink rather a large amount of great south african wine and hang out <laughs> with cool people but but thank you andy and uh i'm not the only one to say thank you to you marinda kruger uh saying andy is a great ambassador for South African wines. So fortunate having Elephant Corner wines represent Elgin Vintners. Uh, Wellington Moramba is watching. There is a lot happening on the South African wine industry. Innovative winemaking coupled with premium good quality wines, old vines, and it's such a proud moment to showcase such vines to the world. We enjoy them locally, and it's exciting to share such excellence with the world. Thank you, Wellington, another key figure in our South African wine industry. And Johan Fulhoorn. Hey, mate. Great show. Thanks, Andy and Dan. Excited to receive you and our customers here in South Africa soon at Clarington Wines and Normandy Estate. 1693. I uh, had a bottle of that last week. I think there's still uh, plenty of purple wax on the floor of my cellar as I got through a slightly older uh, bottle. Uh, Andy, to go back to you there with something Wellington said, talking about uh, about the old vines and uh, a lot of the stories. There are a lot of stories that you can tell about South African wine, be it the old vine story, the success of Chenin Blanc, Stellenbosch Cabernet Sauvignon, the rise of Swartland, Kimmel and Arders, the new Burgundy, uh, 50 years of Cup Classique. So many great narratives. The narrative that's being pushed at Cape Wine and that Siobhan has been running us through, that one of sustainability, how much is that something that your customer base in America is interested in and from there is perhaps making choices on? How, how big is the carbon footprint? How much glass are you using in your bottle? Are you beyond just simply organic? Are you biodynamic? How much does that fit in to the conversations that you're having with people who are buying wine in America? Yeah, every day, Dan, um, in some way, shape or form, every day. Uh, sustainability, biodynamics, um, you name it. It's it's an ongoing conversation that, uh, you know, I, depending on the circumstances who we're speaking with, um, I mean, our, our, uh, our vendors like Stefan Bobbs, Salisbury and the other guys I mentioned, uh, that's key to um, to their understanding better of what we do in South Africa and, and why it's done. 
and uh, and I think you know our, our producers themselves are are, um, are feeding us that information to to pass on, and that's really really key from a personal level. Uh, I was just speaking to Divine on the other day about um, old vines and labels telling a story, and and uh, you know there's plenty of space to be able to improve what we tell people and the back label. Um, like for example, you look at this one here, the Atrefa again, the back label there. Unfortunately, a lot of it's taken up with this, uh, this government warning on from the US. But, um, you know, we're looking at making improvements on these labels to actually tell a better story of where the wine is from, the block number of the vineyard and so on, the climate. Uh, you know, without being too boring, all of that stuff actually does matter to the consumer. And, um, and, and that's an, an ongoing improvement that we can make on certain wines, I think, especially wines like uh, the old vine, uh, uh, the Cinsos and, you know, you name it, the heritage vines, as it were. So um, yeah, I mean this is a this is an everyday story, and um, I try to uh, I try to, sh to share as much as I can to my to my vendors who I know pass that on to their customers, and that's why I think that's part of our success over here. I think if you don't do that, you're missing an opportunity to tell the world what uh, what we're actually doing here. Because again, it's a story that a lot of people don't necessarily know too much about South African wine, and when they learn how advanced we are on that side of things in comparison to other countries which should be further ahead than they are. I think I'm very proud to tell people that story and, and to know that the wine show this year is focusing on sustainability 360 is, is, is massively important. And, uh, and, and to listen to what Siobhan was saying about the recycled booze and all this kind of stuff, phenomenal. I mean, you go the extra mile and it's, 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 it's a story that we need to tell. It's, it's got to be told every day. Speaking of telling stories, before I forget a question from Melissa Sutherland a little earlier, how can we sign up to your newsletter? Uh, so, best way for my newsletter is to um, to send me uh, your email address, and then I'll just put you on once a month when I when I put it out there. So, if you can personal message me um, uh, uh, via Facebook or um, my email is Andy at elephantscornerwines.com. That's wines plural dot com, and uh, yeah, just shoot me an email, and I'll put you on the list. And thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> It's a really, really interesting uh, wine newsletter to read. And what I love reading, just because it makes me really proud to see how much is being done by this small but very determined team in America to get South African wine onto that big American wine map. Uh, Siobhan, what does it make you feel as CEO of, of Wines of South Africa? And I know you won't say this yourself, so I will say it on your behalf. Uh, a team that has fairly modest resources and yet still does an extraordinary job uh, right around the world with the, the different team members that you have. When you see the energy and enthusiasm of somebody like Andy and via the comments, uh, people who both in South African America are supporting him to in turn support the South African wine industry, how much of a, a skip does that put in your step? Uh, it's, it's, I can, I'm going to go open a bottle of bubbly now. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I love Andy's passion. I love hearing about um, what what really makes the consumer tick, why people are, are hooking into South African wine. And what, what it really excites me is what I'm hearing from Andy shows that what we are doing is right. Um, you know, the messages we're trying to put out there, um, the aspects that we're trying to emphasize is are definitely spot on because Andy's playing them back. He's telling us exactly that. So it really excites me. And, and I'm very grateful. Uh, you know, thank you, Andy, for what you do do, um, the passion that you carry. And that's one thing I know and I've picked up around the world it, with importers and even buyers who support South African wine is there's a huge amount of passion. Even with my own team, you know, uh, Dan, correctly, we don't have a lot of resources to work with. Um, but there's a huge amount of passion and, and, and people go the extra mile. You know, you mentioned Jim. If you look at his podcast that he does, um, his IGTV live um, interviews he does, he just does that because that's what he wants to do, you know, and he's exceptionally passionate and knowledgeable about South African wine. And when you come in contact with people like that, like Jim, like Andy, it's infectious. You know, you, you, you want to be hooked in, you want to try because it's just such a fascinating story, but there's also a huge amount of passion linked into it. Um, and I always say that wine is about passion. It's a huge heap of passion. You've got to love it. And, and I think what we have, we can love. Um, we've got amazing wines from incredible regions. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud. And, and I'd like to thank everyone out there um, who, who goes out there and becomes the South African ambassador and really drives our, our brands 
our brand South African wines, put it that way. You've got a lot of people excited along with Andy. One of them is Keith Magoli, who asks an important question. When will we be able to book for Cape Wine? And by extension, uh, who should be booking? Who should be coming? Is this exclusively I own a supermarket or I uh, work in the wine industry somewhere else in the world? Uh, or is it a, a more broader invitation for people to come and be part of this? So that's a fantastic question. And thank you, Keith, for asking that. So Cape Wine is a trade-focused show. Um, it's not a consumer show. So if you're just a consumer out there who buys wine, it's not the right forum for you and you won't be allowed entry. And that's because it's a business forum. So who do we want at the show? We want buyers. We want media. We want influencers. We want importers. Anybody who wants, has an interest and a passion in South African wine, who wants to sell it and promote it, you are welcome. Um, doesn't matter which country you come from. You are more than welcome. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. How do you register and how do you find out more? You go onto our website and that's Cape Wine, one word, 2022.com. Thanks, Dan. You put it up on the screen. And you go on and you register. I think it, please do register beforehand. And the reason why is it will, if you don't register, there's going to be huge jams and queues for the first morning when you come in and it's going to take time. If you pre-register, you get pre-approved and, and all you do is you come up to the registration table the day of the, of the show and we print out your badge, give you a lanyard and you walk straight in. So I, I do encourage people to pre-register. That is important and, the, and you can do that. You just go onto the top of the website and you'll see it. And as we're getting more information on the seminars and you know other activities, we load it onto the website. So keep going onto the website to get information. We will also probably in the next two weeks load the floor plan so you can see exactly where the exhibitors will be and you can plan your journey. Um, we've listed who the exhibitors are so you can really see who they are. And if you want to pre-book meetings with them, you can get in contact with them. So the idea is to do a lot of homework before you get to the show. If you know what you, you know, wines you're interested in, um, go and have a look at, at, at the various producers' websites, get in contact with them, set the meetings, and, and that will help things uh, flow a lot, a lot better. We've got probably 400 producers going to be in the hall. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of producers. It's more than 2018. So it's going to be busy. It's going to be active get in there, read your information. One thing I do want to highlight is we are going to try and reduce as much paper as possible. So we're not going to have a lot of brochures available. Um, our catalog will be electronic. So you would need an, a device to download the catalog that you can walk around with. And that's because we are we're trying to be a sustainable show. So, so that is important and for you to note up front. Is there an idea yet? Can you reveal yet, uh, other than the minister who you did mention, who else we might be looking forward to hearing speaking and any of the other events uh, that are particular highlights that you can let the cat out of the bag about just yet? Yeah, I think I, I can tell you now we will have um, the head of Amram talking about cork and recycling of cork and all the good work that's being done on cork, particularly from a sustainability point of view and the work they're doing in South Africa in particular in terms of supporting um, development. Um, we've got DHL talking about the development of couriering and uh, carbon footprint because these are important aspects, particularly for our industry. And we will also have an economist talking about the prosperity um, aspect aspect around South African wine. So we're unpacking those topics um, to talk about where we are in this journey. And um, and I think, yeah, we, we've got a, quite a few nice um, speakers for the, for the bigger seminars that happen on a daily basis and some really nice juicy topics. And um, yeah, I think there's some exciting stuff that we're going to be doing in what we call the tasting zone. So we're going to be looking and unpacking regionality this time. Last show, we looked at varieties or cultivars. Now we're unpacking regionality because we feel South Africa is in the development phase of people starting to understand the uniquenesses of the different regions and what they're getting to, to be known for. So there's the talk about you mentioned um, Stellenbosch Cabernet, you know, their focus on Cabernet, um, Hillman and Arda's focus in terms of where they want to be, France are concerned. So, you know, it'll be ideal area where, where you can go and explore the wines in your own time and really taste good examples that comes out of that come out of each sort of region or area. Um, but yeah, I think I think the idea is really keep a, keep a watch on the Cape Wine website. And as we start, um, you know, as we tie up something, we're going to start publicizing it and putting it out there. 
I heard the term the tasting zone. I think this mm -hmm. might be a very important one for me to be involved with, Siobhan. So I shall send <laughs> you tomorrow the important <laughs> proposal. Um, we've had some great comments come through from people, but this has to be not just the best comment we've had today, but one of the best ones this year. It's short, it's simple, it's full of love. Well done, Andrew, from Mum. Isn't that <laughs> a lovely comment there, Andy? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> He's nice. Yeah. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> uh, you've got a, a bit of a sketch there from uh, from Siobhan about what is being planned, and it, it does sound really exciting. I know you're bringing everybody across, and you've you've got this team to showcase South Africa. It is it is that the most exciting point for you, just to be able to to show the home of South African wine to the people who've been part of your South African wine journey in America. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think, I mean, even for me too, you know, uh, every time I come to the country, it's, it's a learning experience. And um, and just to impart what I know uh, from this, on this side of the Atlantic, as it were, um, is okay. It's pretty good, you know, but to actually take people there that are passionate as much as I am uh, uh, to want to visit the region and, um, uh, and learn for themselves and see for themselves, I think it's a uh, it's a great, I'll use the word platform again, it's a great platform to be able to work uh, work from and um, and to be able to uh, uh, tell the stories, to listen to what's going on, the new things uh, that, uh, that, that that wineries are involved with. Um, it, all of that stuff is, is, is vital information to take back with me personally so that I can better sell what I do. And obviously our customers experience it firsthand too. And, uh, and just the relationships with our winemakers, um, that's also, you know, it's it's a very personal thing, as 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 you guys know, and uh, to have that rapport, to have that connection, um, and the passion, just as Siobhan said, it's 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 a part of this business, and um, uh, and, you, and the only reason you can keep that going, the only way to keep that going, is to is to sometimes be on site and to uh, and and to pick up what the latest things are, and uh, and the show provides that platform off the bat, really. You have a country where importing wine is not easy and every state has rules that almost seem designed to make it more complicated than the next. You've got a country that makes its own wine and some very good wine in a number of different states in America. A country that probably knows French wine better and has easy access to Chilean and to Argentinian wine geographically. There's a glut of Australian wine trying to find a, a new home now that uh, the Chinese friendship is a little cooler than before. And yet still... You're soldiering on and driving forward with this South African wine story. What is it that pushes you so hard and makes you so clearly confident in the future of South African wine in America? Um, you know, that's a good question. I, I, I guess it's within me somewhere. I don't, I don't really know. I mean, since, since the first time I met um, Finant and Anya uh, Decliner Vine, um, we just hit it off. You know, uh, I'm. And from there on, other people that I've met in the industry, uh, and it's almost a want to uh, to see success and uh, and to be a part of that success. And um, for me, being in, in motorsport, as I mentioned, it's a team environment. Uh, I worked as the same Formula One and Le Mans and stuff like that. It's all about a team, and I feel that I am a part of this team that uh, uh, that that can you know be extended across to the U.S. Of course, and. Um, uh, and, and I want to be doing well. I want to. I want you know our, our wines to be successful. I want all of my producers to taste that success here in North Carolina, where some of them maybe thought their wines may never be sold. And um, uh, and it's 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 just a passion, and it's a thrill to be able to do that and uh, to have that close connection with with all of them, and to have my vendors to know those people too firsthand, you know, on a personal level is 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 amazing. And. Um, the accessibility of it in that sense is very good too, you know. But what I will say, Dan, as well, listening to um, you guys talking about the wines and the style of wines and so on, um, we have uh, we have remarkable wines in South Africa, absolutely stunning wines that really knock others out of the park. I mean, when I do wine dinners, I do tastings, and people walk out the door with cases of wine. That speaks for itself. They don't need to say anything more to me. Uh, but, you know, very often people tell me, wow, I didn't realize wine was this good in South Africa. So our winemakers need to take note of what I'm telling them right now. They're making some fantastic products. Don't let the head get too big here, guys. But, you know, in general, you're making superb wines at the, at the, the pinnacle of, 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 of 
quality and uh and i'm just you know that's what that's what drives me to to you know find the producers to, to uh take the advice of the winemakers we're working with now to uh to find you know to, to speak to other producers and um uh, and maybe consider bringing their wines into into the country too and uh and to be approached by um you know uh wineries without us having to go look for them uh that's a that in itself is a uh, a, a statement which uh, I'm very, very proud of. I mean, um, Chamonix is one that I hold in extremely high regard, and they came to me asking would would we be interested in uh, in, in being their U.S. Um, importer, and uh, of course I couldn't believe my ears. You know, I, I was like, oh my god, that's an amazing uh, thing for them to ask me. Same with Gerard and Holden. I mean, it just blows my mind, you know, to be working with these with these wineries, which. Um, they have a hell of a lot to offer, and uh, and I'm very proud to be a person here in North Carolina to bring that uh, uh, their what their, their products to North Carolina and to introduce them to our to our fans. Basically, it's a it's a it's a, a fan base that's growing and um, continuing to do so. So, yeah, to be able to come to the show, it's a, a reminder of what we're doing. It's a um, great uh, eye opener, and uh, for uh, and just to be back in the Cape is it's, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world, if not the most beautiful. And uh, to be a part of that in a very small way, um, I don't need to do anything else, mate. That, that's, the, that's the deal for me. <laughs> we have a great asset in America in Andy. Marinda Krieger is summing it up nicely. Understanding mutual long-term business relationships for the benefit of both is key. Andy grasps the concept so well. And, of course, having a winning mentality helps, which speaks to the jersey. Stuart Mack asking the question, Andy, did you have a Wales jersey on standby just in case <laughs> they didn't go as planned? No. I shall answer on your behalf. No, he didn't, Stuart. Um, yeah, proudly South African, as is Melissa Sutherland, who mentions with an exclamation mark, Constantia Sauvignon Blanc as another of the categories that we celebrate. And uh, and we do so with great, great vigor because it's another one that's just terrific. Uh, as we wrap up, Siobhan, three months to go. Uh, first of all, what is the journey for you and your team between now and kickoff, other than lots and lots and lots and lots of hard work? Uh, and then when we're done, a week later, you and I are sitting feet up uh, on the <laughs> Terrace of Lemon House, glass of Cup Classique in hand, and looking back on Cape Wine. What to you would be the success story you'd like to reflect on? Yeah, so to answer your first question, Dan, I think now is we've come to the crunch time of all the small details, you know, um, making sure the catalog's done and wines are entered, collecting wines, all the all the hard work really, really sets in now because you can't drop any balls. So the team is running and they're running hard. Um, we also have another show to plan for the beginning of next year, but but we sort of, we're juggling balls. We always do and we always get it right. I think for me, what would what would be a successful um, Cape wine is really to ensure that we do have the visitors and I, and I think the best thing that's happened for us is the lifting of the COVID regulations because I think that would have really put a lot of pressure on us in terms of people in the hall. Um, I am delighted to hear all the responses from people, you know, uh, writing in on the show to say who's coming to Cape wine because it's really great to hear that. So, you know, I would like to see at least 2,000 visitors. We normally have about 2,000, 2,500. If we get 2,500, I will be delighted because that's what we need. We need quality and we need more than quantity. We need the quality of the people in there. And what I'm hearing is we're going to have those people who are serious about increasing their portfolios, taking on South African wine, be it for the first time or, or not, but, you know, about growing the business. So for me, it is attracting those people from overseas getting them over here, seeing a hall buzzing and seeing smiling faces when it comes to producers. And that's what I always find those three days in the hall is for, for our staff and, and the people on the floor working, including the producers, it's really a tough three days. You are on your feet from morning till evening. You're busy. But there is just so much energy in that hall. It's incredible. And, and I think for me, I just want to make sure – that we have everyone there, we have the energy, and everyone is positive, and, and I think they are going to be, um, particularly when they taste our wine. 
Great show, says Grant Souls, watching over on YouTube. Saw Grant at the Marvel relaunch. And that is down to the two guests that I've had with me this evening. Looking forward to Cape Wine. Judy Dyer saying that she's so looking forward to sharing wines with new international friends. I think that speaks to all of us. And this is a good point just before we say goodbye to Siobhan and to Andy to confirm that Dan really likes wine. Won't just be down at Cape Wine drinking everything in sight, but we'll be broadcasting live every day and uh, popping up wherever we can to be part of and to support what is going to be such a wonderful celebration of the South African wine industry and the incredible people in it. Uh, Siobhan, very best of luck over the next three months. I know you and Morena and the team uh, are working 27-hour days and we're benefiting from all of it. Uh, so good luck and uh, make sure you Thank get you. those uh, Pinot Noir Chenin Blanc balances right in terms of refueling along yeah. the way. Um, and Andy, thank you. It's uh, it's always just so lovely uh, seeing how uh, how South African wine shines around the world, but we can't do it without people like yourself. So uh, keep on going. And I'm very much looking forward to joining up with you and your team when you're in Cape Town, having a few glasses of wine in person, and hopefully you're wearing the same rugby jersey when you get here. <laughs> Not a Welsh one, that's for sure, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Sorry, <laughs> there we go. Uh, Marinda Kruger, great show. Thanks, Dan. Well, thank you, Marinda, for watching. Daryl Balfour, just back from his latest safari uh, with uh, with Angela Lloyd. Uh, lagged in late, just back from Kenya. Excellent show that I caught. I suspect we'll see you down at Cape Wine as well, Daryl, uh, photographing away. A big thank you to Siobhan Thompson, CEO of Wines of South Africa. Cape Wine 2022, if you're in the broader industry, it is unmissable and it is going to be fantastic. And a big, big thank you to the Elephant's Corner team, led by the great Andy Wilger and the wonderful work that they are doing for South African wine in America. That wraps us up for the show this week. Thank you to Advocate George Karinos for lending me his office. I may well be back here on Thursday, depending on how the power situation is looking. If you haven't signed up yet, uh, there is a pick and pay winemakers table on Thursday evening. De Hrendel will be part of that one. Sarensburg joining in as well. Uh, if you haven't, head over to Web Tickets. You can grab your tickets there. I'll be hosting that one for you on Thursday night. And just before that, we'll be dipping into Wimbledon with the guys from Lanson and trying to help the small French wine industry in between all of the great celebrations of South Africa as we join a couple of French winemakers for a bit of international perspective as the tennis comes to an end this week. That does it for Dan Really Likes Wine for this evening. Huge thank you and congratulations to Siobhan and to Andy as well. Thank you for watching. We've had a great show. Loads of people. Do join us again on Thursday. Go and find a bottle of South African wine and enjoy it. Good night. To join the Pick and Pay Wine Club, simply SMS your smart shopper number to 36775. It's absolutely free and you'll get for yourself three times the smart shopper points on every bottle of wine bought. You'll also get a 20% discount on 10 different wines each month, a 25% discount on a case of wine, and a magnum, some terrific competitions and invitations to awesome events.